These are the ones who, living in the flesh, planted the church with their blood. They drank the chalice of the Lord and became the friends of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the apostles, Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant we pray that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the feast of unleavened bread. He had him taken into custody and put him in prison. Under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each, he intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers. While outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out. Not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real, he thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out of the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The Lord Lord delivered me from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. 
Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. And from now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat, and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. (coughs) Today the church celebrates the great solemnity of the feast day of Saints Peter and Paul. And today we commemorate their martyrdom. And so this is... They say that the saints did not share the same martyrdom day Martyred on different days, different times. But we celebrate them together because they were unified in their mission and unified as founders of the church in the city of Rome. And we can look at their lives and we can see just how different these two were. We see Peter, one who is very much interested in following the Lord, but when he's walking on water, he looks down and he doubts and he falls. He's the one who's prophetic and points out that Jesus is truly the Christ. But then immediately, shortly after that, is then told by Jesus to get behind him, Satan, because he's he's still unwilling to bear or understand that sacrifice the Lord has to go through. And then he wants to be strong for the Lord, but then when put to the test in the garden, he betrays him three times. And so we see in Peter this man who has these high desires, but is always falling short of that. Meanwhile, we see someone like Paul, who's incredibly zealous, incredibly ardent, even angry for the Lord. And so he's going too far to the extreme. He's persecuting the Christians because it seems to be contrary to the will of God. And then when he learns about them, he's the one who's then going out, going out, preaching the word. And even when he sees Peter then in the early church who's beginning to eat with the Jewish people and is no longer making a space for the Gentiles, it's Paul who goes and he calls him out. And so we have, but yet at the same time, as Paul is this zealous preacher of the word who's always going above and beyond, It wasn't given to one like Paul to be the rock. It was given to Peter. 
And so we celebrate Peter being that rock, the foundation of the church. There's one, I think it's von Balthasar, who speaks about how the Lord shows one who is weak enough to then be able to show the Lord's strength through it. He didn't choose the strongest apostle, but possibly chose the weakest one as the foundation stone of the church. Which then echoes these words of St. Paul of in weakness, there I am strong. And Peter lives that out as Paul preaches it. And we see this as Peter's in chains. The community of disciples is not ashamed of Peter. They are not disparaging the fact that their leader is in chains. They're not disparaging the fact that he got himself arrested, but they pray for him. And their prayers are able to work this grace that then unlocks Peter's chains. Those chains are broken because of the prayers of the faithful. And Pope Francis in his homily today, speaking about this, spoke about how the nature of the church at that time was one not to complain of their leaders, but to pray for them. And how the prayer of the faithful for others, especially for our bishops, for the Pope, and for us priests, has that great power to break those chains, not just physical, but spiritual. So those things which we want to complain about, if we turn our hearts to prayer, can lead to those spiritual breakthroughs for those things that we want to see in our leadership. And so we're encouraged there to pray. And Pope Francis encourages us to pray for him, the Pope, but also for our bishops, that they may continue to be strong, continue to be more and more conformed to Christ, and more and more bear out that courage and perseverance which we see in St. Peter and we see in St. Paul. We can look at our two readings today. One comes from early on in Peter's ministry. He's still excited and amazed that this miracle happened to him to set him free. But then we can see what must have been the, both of their experiences in these words of St. Paul, which comes at the end of his ministry. He speaks about running the race well. He speaks about the miracles that he's seen the Lord done for him. For Peter, it was escaping those chains. For Paul, he speaks about being rescued from the lion's mouth. Both of these men have witnessed great things in their service of the Lord. Both of these men gave their lives for this person who they've come to love, the Lord Jesus. They gave their lives to serve him, to preach him, to make him known. And they've witnessed great miracles because of that. And as they reach the end of their lives then, they're able to rejoice, to give thanks for the good things they've witnessed from the Lord. And for each of us, they stand as witnesses for those who followed in the faith. So we ask for the grace to be able to echo those words of Paul and Timothy, that our, our lives too might be witnesses to God's love of the good things that he's done for us, of the challenges that he's helped us to escape, but to be able to say that we've competed well in the faith, that we've run the race well, not disparaging, not complaining, but praying, remaining close to the Lord, being his witnesses in the world, and in the midst of our families, in the midst of our workplaces, giving thanks to God that he gave us these apostles, Peter and Paul, to be that rock and foundation by giving their very lives to establish the church firmly in that city of Rome, which we still look to as our foundation as we continue to spread throughout the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Seeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess to him baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the great apostles, Peter and Paul, we come forward as church to offer prayers to our Heavenly Father. For our Pope Francis, successor to Peter, may the Lord continue to protect and preserve him as he leads our holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For world leaders, may the Holy Spirit grant them fortitude in their work for peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. For all who are persecuted for the sake of the gospel, may they receive the strength, courage, and grace that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who worship here this day, may the light of Christ illumine any darkness we carry and guide us in our daily lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our faithful departed, may they receive the crown of righteousness and the eternal kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. For Kevin Zur and for Carolyn Ryder, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God, hear the prayers of your church and grant them according to your will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by your providence the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter foremost in confessing the faith, Paul its outstanding preacher. Peter who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ, and revered together throughout the world. They share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you gave life to all things and made them holy, and never ceased to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, 
by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Peter and Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved. Peter said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Let us pray. Oh, for those joining us on the live stream, our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul made steadfast in your love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for he has made you steadfast in St. Peter's saving confession, and through it has set you on the solid rock of the church's faith. Amen. And having instructed you by the tireless preaching of St. Paul, may God teach you constantly by his example to win brothers and sisters for Christ. Amen so that by the keys of St. Peter and the words of St. Paul and by the support of their intercession, God may bring us happily to that homeland that Peter attained on, the, on a cross and Paul by the blade of a sword. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended.